Ty Bartonella Buddies and Exosomes Buddies. I'm going to tell you right off the bat that this is going to be maybe a depressing video. Based on what's happened in my health world today, I decided to film, and I don't even know what I'm gonna title this video. I wasn't planning on filming today. I did do my makeup earlier today, just for fun. I didn't bother picking out an outfit, so I'm just wearing my pajama shirt. I have been suspecting for a little while now that the exosomes have been kicking up some of my mast cell symptoms and I really really didn't want to believe that because it's been so fantastic for my pain. It has brought my the usage of my hands from 3% to around 10 to 15% which is huge. Also my hair is greasy but you might not be able to tell through the camera so if you can't tell it's not greasy. But the things that have made me think that the exosomes are making my MCAS worse are after my most recent infusion, the infusion went off, went, the infusion went on, off without a hitch, on without a hitch, went without a hitch. So nothing happened during the infusion, <laughs> but then the next day I woke up and my entire abdomen was completely bloated. I was like a balloon. The bloating has gotten worse throughout the exosomes therapy. That's one reason. Another reason I think it's kicking up my mast cells is it the it has some sort of excitatory effect. I need less sleep on the exosomes, but it has an excitatory effect also on my nerves. So I've had to double my Valium dosage. So that's reason number two. Reason number three is it's doing something to my hormones. I don't know by what mechanism. My periods are shorter. My breasts swell for more time during the month. And a lot of people with MCAS, their MCAS goes up and down based on their hormones or menstrual cycle. So that's number three. Number four is prior to the exosomes, I never had a reaction to the tampon, to any tampon. And my first ever reaction to a tampon was while I was on exosomes therapy. And it was a terrible, terrible reaction. As I said in that video, it felt like shards of glass were in my entire upper GI tract. Number five is with this most recent infusion, it's not really touching my pain as much. And if you recall my video with uh, the, when I was on steroids, the steroids were both helping and hurting my MCAS at the same time. So that can happen. Um, and then the sixth reason is I've had a few mast cell mediated fever reactions to the exosomes. They were very short lived. One was quite a high fever. It came down with Valium and Benadryl, but it was a MCAS reaction nonetheless. I have been not wanting to say that these could be due to the exosomes because I don't want to stop the exosomes because I know that when I stop the exosomes, my pain is going to slowly creep back in and actually might not be so slow. I'm also thinking about when I stop the exosomes that my pain might actually be worse because I've been using my body a lot more. So it's like if you broke your ankle and you took a bunch of anti- inflammatory meds or steroids or anti or painkillers or something and then you walked around on that broken ankle a lot and not feeling that and then all those meds were off and then now your ankle is like even more effed up so similar sort of thing I've been using my hands I've been sitting in cross-legged position and going like like hunching over a little bit so I can type on my computer I can't put my computer on my lap it's too much pressure even though the computer is three fucking pounds um and I have to go back to just sitting like this in bed on pillows, even though it hurts my upper back to lean against pillows with my legs outstretched in front of me, not crossed and with just on my heels because it hurts in any other way, not text, not edit my own videos. And I just don't want to go back to my prison of pain where I barely moved. It's like you're locked in a cell that's your body. And I sometimes hate talking about my pain because there are people that have it so much worse. But then if I don't give an accurate description, then 
people don't understand how really how truly bad it is. And so I'm thinking if I'm if I have to come off my exosomes, I better start resting now. I better start stop walking on my broken ankle, you know, to use that metaphor. And then the other thing is like I love uploading my videos and I don't wanna I've been uploading like one every ten days and I don't wanna stop and you know they say if you're not uploading on YouTube you're dying on YouTube. But I guess it doesn't really matter when you feel like you're dying in real life. Uh, <laughs> and if I'm being honest, I want people to stop messaging me and asking me how I beat Bartonella because if you would just watch a couple more of my videos, you would know that I'm I'm not I haven't even started been able to start treatment. <laughs> and I'll probably cut this out, but I just wanted to say it because I'm finding this therapeutic, but there are these, like, a few horrible people who think that my channel makes light of this illness, and it pisses me off so bad. I hate that they say that. I hate that. And it's like, don't let the haters get to you, and, like, if I'm really being honest, I don't feel like I really let the haters get to me all that much, but... To accuse me of making light of this illness is so off base and deranged. It's honestly, it's deranged. I have thoughts of suicide every day because I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live with full-time care from my mom until she dies and then live with full-time care from some random fucking person until I die. I'm not... I'm not going to live like that and I know other people live like that and I don't want to take away say that they their experience or them living like that is not a life worth living but I don't know if I, I can't do that to accuse me of making light of this illness when I'm down to 93 pounds from 103 pounds I'm five foot two so I'm not like you know not really like knocking on death's door or anything, but I feel hungry all day. I have, I say 10 foods. I mean, if your four of your foods are zucchini, yellow squash, kabocha, and what the fuck is my other other squash? Delicata. And delicata. So four of them are squash and I fucking hate squash. <laughs> like, do I really have to count all four of those? Are those really four foods? And then it's butter. I get a third of my calories from butter, which like, yay, I'm actually really happy I can eat butter, but still. And then potato and sweet potato. And it's like, yeah, those are two different foods. But then like, is a different kind of a sweet potato another, another food? No. Carrots. Celery. Okay, so... Nine foods. I think it's really five foods. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think having this illness for this long, your your perception of how many foods you have gets distorted. And having burning nerve pain all over my body and shards of glass when I react to medicines and only being able to tolerate three medicines and um, being reliant on my mom for full-time care for over two years, me making light of this illness, you can... <laughs> I think we're cutting that out. <laughs> I'm waiting on Zolair to be covered. I think it has great potential, but a lot of these things I tried have had great potential. Oh my God, if someone else recommends to me going into these new medications with a positive mindset, I don't care how disabled I am, I'm going to find a bat and I'm going to find you and I'm gonna find your kneecaps. I do not react to things because of my mindset. I can't meditate my way out of this. If you can meditate your way out of this, that's fine. I can't. So I really want the Zolaire to work so bad, but it has a long half-life, so if it irritates my body in some sort of way, I could have burning nerve pain or belching for a long time as a three-week half-life. And then people are like, oh, why don't you try more natural ways? I react to natural things. Natural things are not necessarily less immunogenic than non-natural things. So, no. Well, one of my doctors 
very, very generously offered to try to get all of my doctors to speak to each other because I have five of them and I am the hub of the five of them and it's very overwhelming. It's like the only time where I want people to talk my, behind my back. <laughs> you know, people say like, oh, you're so chipper in front of the camera. Like, you don't see me being an absolute nightmare horror show. I throw things. I'm not, I'm not proud of this. <laughs> I throw things. I slam the doors. I almost broke. You're like, how do you have so much pain? You slam the door. Yeah, I hurt myself. Slam, I slam the door over and over and over because I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I don't know if you can tell. I'm so mad and I'm so frustrated and there's no one really to blame. There's nothing to blame So I have a lot of misplaced anger. So yeah, I almost broke the fucking Um What is it called? Door jam, door jam. <laughs> I'm a fucking toddler who throws tantrums One more thing I thought of that's also depressing is my biggest fear is my mom dying prior to for me getting sick and of course my mom's going to die at some point but she's my best friend my best friend is 40 years older than me i know i waited too fucking long didn't I? jesus christ why couldn't you have me at like 10 <laughs> to think about living without her while still being in this horrible mess or to think about her being too old to care for me before i'm out of this mess is Honestly, I still would recommend the whole, like, would you recommend XYZ to a friend? Like, I would recommend exosomes to a friend. I think it's worth a try. Me reacting to them doesn't make them not safe. I react to all foods except my five foods, or however we're going to count them, um, and those foods aren't unsafe. And with that, I would love it if you would consider subscribing if you have not done so already. And without further ado, I'm going to leave you and eat this squash. Bye Martinella buddies.